Hey, Allison, hmm. you want to take a trip to a questionable cabin and maybe get attacked by some werewolves? Cool beans! Cool beans? What year is it? Alrighty then. <laughs> there were some Jim Carrey references in here, weren't there? There were. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Alrighty then. Door, buckle up because you are about to meet your maker. There were two Jim Carrey references. They had P A R T Y the fuck not. Yeah. <laughs> P A R T Y. Why the fuck not? There's a lot of things, like questions I have about this game, but I do wonder why all of the slang seems about like 10 years out of date. Cool beans. Cool story, bro. Ladies. Dylan, thank you. You actually saved my life. For realsies. For realsies. Because it's supposed to be a throwback. <laughs> That's why there's it's, a VHS tape. It's a throwback to the 80s, which yeah. I get, but it's still set in 2021. I think they just didn't know how 20 something sound like these days mm -hmm. because they threw in a lot of stuff that that yeah. people don't say now wait how did you get your phone back before the rest of us i never turned it in you sure did turn it off before you handed it in dylan them's the rules you noob yeah! when like, david arquette throws out noob it's like sure okay yeah if you want him he seems to be like older and maybe yeah a little he's out of well obviously he's older <laughs> He but, is yeah. Older, but yeah. But yeah, it would make more sense. But yeah, when the actual kids <laughs> throw out these yeah. things, it's kind of like, uh, well, <laughs> just the whole thing's kind of written that way, then, yeah. isn't it? Strong, uh, how do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> how do you do, fellow kids? Especially some of the dialogue with, with Emma when she's talking about being an influencer and her, her Emma Nation. Come after me. Don't come after my followers. My Emma Nation. You really need to come up with a better name for that. Hell yeah, I do. No, I'm afraid I just blew myself. There's gotta be a better way to say that. With a lot of these games, it always leaves me wanting more choice. And I know oh, some of the things I'd like to see in this game would take probably a lot more work, but I mean, I wish that one of these would just, I guess, take the more time to make more of a branching thing. So it feels like you're not making a bunch of choices just to hear someone go, yes or no. Oh, hold on. Oh, uh, but the lodge is that way. Go right here. Why? Come on, scenic route? One last victory lap around the camp? We should really get back. Boo. Thumbs down. Uh, everyone's waiting for us. Yes. Sure, what's the victory? Two months. No technology. I kind of thought it was nice to be offline. Ugh, I didn't. Plus, my subs need me. I guess the way that we started this uh, makes it seem like it, perhaps it's more negative than we no, think about we, it. No, we really like, like this game. Yeah. Like, we enjoyed a lot of parts of what we could see. <laughs> <laughs> Another yeah. complaint, big complaint about this game is the brightness settings. We had to crank this to the max and still there's rooms in this game where it's like, oh, where am I? I'm walking into a wall, am I? Positives for this game for me is that I, I did like the story a lot and I liked it better than Until Dawn's story. But the negative for me is that the gameplay portion really feels pointless. You're just wandering in the dark until you maybe stumble across something because you literally can't see anything. Which is a shame because I think they put a ton of work into the graphics and to the like the look of this game. They have an aesthetic that they chose to go to this 80s pastiche and slasher movies and that type of yeah. thing. I like um, the opening theme really sad. Sounds like Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, you can't see most of this game, so they kind of threw away a lot of the hard work they put into it. One of the main issues with the quarry is there's rather large sections of the game where you don't really feel like you're affecting all that much with your choices in the dialogue pass or when you're walking around investigating. One part that I really liked, which would lead to a ripple effect, is when you're given the choice to break into a cabin earlier in the game with Abigail and Emma in which you could find a little toy and choose to take it or not. Aww. This was little Izzy's. I want 
to play a game. <laughs> Let's get you back to Izzy. Though, I don't know how that toy actually fits into Abigail's really tiny backpack. Anyway, if you do take it, it wouldn't actually come into play until towards the end of the game where Caitlin is able to use the toy to trick werewolf Caleb into getting trapped into the freezer. The game could have really used more events like this to feel like searching around really mattered. This cabin already being opened or not also affects where a werewolf focuses its attack towards the middle of the game and leads to Dylan getting bit on the arm or not. There's another bit where as Emma you can choose to allow Jacob to take fireworks you find for your little party, which ends up being the only way you can have a playthrough where Emma doesn't get a werewolf infection at all. Only one left. Ultimately, the exploration sections mostly boil down to you finding enough pieces of evidence or not. which can clear the main characters of being held responsible for the only one of the werewolf-related deaths that the police really care that much about, I guess, because it always happens. Again, though, this is something that could really use a bigger payoff, because for collecting all of this evidence, you don't get any real additional scenes or anything. All you get is the paranormal podcast Bizarre Yet Bonafide talking about more of the pieces of evidence you found during the credits. Whoa! Okay, what is that? It's her, the hag of Hackett's Quarry. See, full circle. God, uh, uh, no, 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 no. That could be anything. Like what? This is actual stuff, Grace. We have to take this to the police. And then the headline that the playable characters got acquitted appears on the computer screen instead of one of the other possible headlines. And the headline screen is really the only difference between any of the endings besides who lived and who died. The story, I liked it a lot, but it didn't feel like it had a satisfying conclusion in any of the endings. And I guess nothing has any conclusion, no matter what you're building up to. You either kill the white wolf or not, or you get everyone killed or whatever, and then they just say like, you know, this is who lived or who died, but you don't see any of them reuniting, you don't see any of them getting together. It just feels a little unsatisfying. You were talking about you wanted more choice. I think they did put a lot of choice into there, but they didn't really throw in a wrap up for any particular thing. It didn't matter what character choices you made because you weren't gonna see any conclusions to any of the love stories or any of the relationships. None of it goes anywhere. You just see who lives or who died and yeah, they don't like... wrap it up. Kiss either Caitlin or Dylan. Caitlin, shall we? Always happy to please. Dylan, let's go. <laughs> Always happy to please. What about your friend, uh, Caitlin? Is that her name? It seems like she looks up to you. Yeah, she, she has the hots for me. Dylan does too. I don't mind that, like, who lived and who died wrap-up screen, as long as they had some follow-up scenes to make it feel like some of your choices mattered. Yeah, the only the only time it matters in the, the choices you make other than living or dying is with Ted Raimi's character. If you no. choose to be nice to him or you choose to be more angry with him. It's largely left up to whether you syringe Ted Raimi in the jail cell or not. So it boils down to one choice again instead of a lot of your other choices. I feel like too, the character you have a lot of choices with Ted Raimi's character, Travis, Laura, you can make her you know, nicer to him or not throughout a lot Lot of it and it seems like they're building up a relationship but then it's like some of the dialogue later just kind of defaults to standard 
So they're kind of curt with each other, even if that's not the path you've been going down. It just feels a bit wrong. Caleb managed to get Silas to freedom. But Caleb got bit in the process. That's why you've been hunting him. Silas, I mean. Every full moon for six fucking years. Some hunter you are. Yeah, sometimes it feels a bit inconsistent. Um, I do think with their characters, I mean, he did kidnap her for two months. Oh, so absolutely. I feel like even if there's a redemption arc, they're probably not going to be super buddies or anything. No. But, but it they've... does feel like you're building something with that character. Either he's going to redeem himself or turn into a big asshole or whatever. Thanks. For um, not killing me. Yeah. Likewise. But the ending, it doesn't matter with that with that character or not Which because is the you big don't issue get any conclusion. It. Yeah. Befriending, or at least sort of getting along with Travis and not shooting him at the jail, is one of the bigger changes to the story your decisions cause, though. As if they hate each other, one of, or both of, Travis and Laura's stories will end in Chapter 9. If Laura and Ryan team up with Travis though, you get more scenes and a lot more backstory on what caused the werewolf population boom in the area. You blew half the head off my niece, Kaylee Hackett. One of the kindest, gentlest souls to ever walk this earth. And all she wanted to do was help that little boy, locked in a cage by that freak show witch. She convinced Caleb to start a fire. It was just a distraction. Kaylee managed to get Silas to freedom. But Caleb got bit in the process. This is also the only way to have a proper encounter with Silas, patient zero of the werewolves in the quarry. Jacob's kind of the default asshole character in the game. Cool story, bro. He can make nicer choices or douchier choices, but doesn't matter. He's still kind of the biggest douchemonger in the whole game, no matter what you do. Uh, excuse me. Hey, I need this, okay? It's not safe out there. Dude, we gotta protect Nick and Abby. Yeah, and I need to save Emma, all right? She's out there alone. You don't even know if she's in trouble. You don't even know if you're in trouble. Are you trying to piss me off? No, I'm trying to save my girlfriend's life, asshole. Yeah, I don't think she's your girlfriend, dude. What? Get... Going yeah. around with his beard art and stuff. Beep, 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 beep. What beep, are you doing? Beep. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's my beard art. Helps me dar for beers. Huh. How am I just noticing how super lame you are? His story, I think, makes the least sense to not conclude in any sort of way because he's such an important part of setting things in motion because his character had a summer fling with Emma and he wants to spend just one more day with her. She wants to just break it off and not have anything serious. He's got it really bad for her, so he decides to sabotage the car, which is why they can't leave. So that's a big reason why they're all there. Damn it! I thought I told you kids to check everything. We did. It, it should be working. Yeah, well, coulda and shoulda doesn't mean it is, does it? And he goes off to rescue her, and there's all sorts of stuff with his story that involves her. And in the end, if you get a good ending for him, uh, he's just sitting there sad that he didn't get one more day. Yeah. I just wanted one more night together. Is that too much to ask for? <laughs> Shit. Stop crying, you big baby. <laughs> There's no yeah. conclusion to that story in you any You can way. have him have a wrap-up with Emma, but again, like, it's not enough. Hell of a way to end the summer, huh? I gotta come clean. Um, look, it's my fault we're stuck out here. I mess with the fan. You know, when I realized we were staying another night, this is exactly what I worried about. 
I know, I know, I'm so, and I'm sorry, okay? I, I didn't mean for any of this to happen. It's kind of odd because this is the only way Jacob's story gets any real wrap up and it requires Emma getting bit earlier on in the story so that she's outside when she turns back into a human. Otherwise, Jacob sabotaging the van never gets brought up. And even when it does, Emma lets him off pretty light even if he's being more of a dick about it. I kind of wish there was a way for some of the other other characters to find this out and confront him on it, but nope. One of the mainest of the main characters, Ryan, gets yeah. basically a choice between three love interests, seemingly. It's Dylan, Caitlin, or Laura. Right. And Laura's already with another character, Max, but they hint that there might be something going on there between them. It looks like we finally know Ryan's type. Confident. Mm. Heroic. With an eye patch. So pirates. Maybe she shivers his timbers. <laughs> you mostly sort of get a little bit of choice between flirting with Caitlin a little bit. You were telling me how you totally have a thing for Ryan. Wait, are we talking about Ryan, the sailing instructor with the sexy brooding loner thing that totally doesn't do anything for me at all? Mostly it's with Dylan. Look at this old thing. Hey, give me your number. I want to try it out. Why? Uh, so that I can ask you out on a date, uh... Mmm, smooth. And then the Laura stuff, you know, if they gave you any more choice, there could be something there. Yeah. But I wish there was the actual choice, like, you know, have her break things off with Max and end up with Ryan or not. I, I wish it felt more like whoever you're getting closer to, it, it affected how they interacted in the game and it doesn't. Like you have some dialogue where Dylan's saying like, hey, do you think we have a chance? And oh, I, it's a bummer because it seems like his type is this girl with the eye patch or whatever. But you get that no matter what, it doesn't really change how they interact in any way. He never gets together with any of them anyway, but when you make certain choices, we were like, well, what changes if he's more into it with Dylan? Or what changes if he's less into it? And you just text Dylan's disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Or Ryan is interested. And that's it. And they just have to tell you that. Yeah, you have like to that. read it literally on the screen because the characters yeah, don't, don't really express it. Yeah, you don't see that on screen. But I thought that was supposed to be a hint. You are changing this path. So this is the path you're going on, but there's no point to any of them, movie-wise or game-wise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there's two choices for Jacob to sabotage the vehicle, and doesn't really seem to affect the story a whole lot which yeah. you choose. You choose either the gas or this uh, part that you sabotage, and either way, Caitlin and Dylan are going to end up going to the scrapyard to look for either a car or the part. But it really doesn't matter because no matter what, they're going to end up inside a car and then dropping it on a werewolf and leaving. I thought that would affect like whether they have to get the car or get a part. Maybe they have to take a different path, mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't. Okay. Can you fix it? No. Oh. Not without some parts. Specifically, a rotor arm. There's a scrapyard up the road. Okay. So the engine's completely screwed. More great news. I mean, if I could summon a working car out of thin air, I would. Wait, maybe I can. Okay, she's gone nuts. There's a scrapyard up the road. If we're looking for a vehicle, maybe there's one there? The other thing with Ryan's character that was really confusing too, they set him up as basically the lead of this ensemble, and he has the closest relationship with Chris Hackett, which is David Arquette's character, who is set up as the original main werewolf in the line. There's some mm. twists along the way. He's also, he's the cool camp counselor guy yeah. who's like leading all the other kids into taking care of the smaller kids. Yeah, he's not set up really as a bad guy and they have this close relationship, kind of like a, a mentor-mentee relationship. You should know better than to trust someone from Hollywood! The whole animation school thing, what you thought I should do. Right. Y you know, whether or not I should like leave my sister with my grandparents since I'd have to live on campus, you know, and my mom's not exactly around, so I wouldn't want to leave Sarah on her own. Yeah! Uh, and Ryan's like defending him throughout the whole thing when they're yeah. finding questionable things. Chris has these surveillance cameras in the woods. Like, why does he have this? Why does he have a weird kind of dungeon area directly under his office? And pretty much whatever choice you make too, he'll kind of be defending Chris. Is Mr. H spying on us? No, no. I mean, no, no, he can't be. These are just, they're all different 
trails in the woods around camp. Yeah, so he's it's just him. begging to have more of a plot between these two further yeah. down the line. Yeah, they're setting up this whole like dilemma with him. Does he kill this guy that really means a lot to him to try and save other people? Or does he make the choice to let him live and perhaps other people die along the way? Let you bite me and live to kill Chris Hackett or bleed out and die. Pretty much, yeah. But David Arquette's character, after he leaves the camp, you see him once in the jail cell Talking in a with flashback. with bro, Ted Remy. Yeah, and that's it. You shot me. I'm telling mom. You might see him at the end if he lives or if he dies. I guess if he dies, you see him too. Yeah. He's his <laughs> but, yeah. you know, you're going to see him at the end, like, when it wraps up and says if he lived or died or whatever. But you don't get that dilemma with Ryan even. Like, you don't get like, oh, no, I, I don't know if you I should You get to pull the not. trigger or not. Bobby! The gun! I guess, I guess you are having the dilemma of Ryan at that moment, but it just feels unsatisfying and extremely strange that you don't have an opportunity to save him and kill the werewolf earlier in the line. Especially with the way they set up how werewolves work in this game, because you basically take out who, the line of whoever like that werewolf bit. Further down the line, they bit this person, that person. You take out this one, then all those people are free. Yeah. So if you take out the main werewolf, wolf which in this game is Silas the white wolf who is Laura Palmer's mother's son <laughs> yeah the hag of Hackett's quarry yeah. the hag of Hackett's quarry what's the hag of Hackett's quarry you don't know about the hag of Hackett's quarry tell her about the hag of Hackett's quarry I don't know it's never really been clear anyways Hag of Hackett's Quarry. Can we just please stop saying the Hag of Hackett's Quarry I don't think she wants to know about the Hag of Hackett's <laughs> Quarry it's Eliza Voraz Silas's mother I th think. That's the instigating event of all of this. She ran a traveling freak show of sorts, and uh, there was a fire that was caused accidentally by one of the Hackett kids. She convinced Caleb to start a fire. It was just a distraction. Give him enough time to get Silas out of his cage and give him his freedom. Trying to free her son, the wolf boy, the dog boy, mm -hmm. uh, who was a werewolf, and they end up being cursed, and her ghost is haunting them, and Silas is the first werewolf that they have to take out. There never really seems to be a dilemma, too, about the fact that he was pretty much innocent in all of this, either. Uh, I feel like they don't really get into too much of that. He's out there still, all alone. Each full moon they hunt him armed with silver. The other main collectible during investigations are the tarot cards, which the Hag of Hackett's Quarry will use to show you possible futures in between chapters. However, a lot of what she can show you isn't really reliable as she is not there to help you keep everyone alive. She's just trying to manipulate events so that her son Silas survives and all the Hackett's die. So, if you end up killing her son, she's slightly less than thrilled with you. I will not forget forget what you made them do to my Silas. Whenever you hear a noise in the dark, a whisper from the shadows, the breath on the back of your neck, that's gonna be me. I'll be there. Now I will never leave you. I'll never leave you. If you follow the path she wants you to go down and eliminate all the Hackett's, you'll get the good for her ending where she praises you. The curse is broken. Whatever the cost, whatever darkness from the night still remains, the future, at least, is now a little brighter. I'll never forget how you helped me. There's a lot of like weird backstory that's like begging to have more expanded upon because we find out eventually that one of Chris Hackett's kids, Kaylee, was the one who freed Silas in the first place and started this whole mess with the werewolves. Mm -hmm. But she was doing it because she thought this boy was being mistreated in this stupid yeah. act and she felt bad for him. Yeah, and in no situation are you able to save this character because it's a plot point that Laura ends up killing her thinking that it's Chris. Not my only granddaughter, not my Kaylee, not my little Kaylee, not my little Kaylee, not my little Kaylee! What the hell is going on up here? We ain't keeping them safe anymore, Bobby. 
Not after what they did to our Kaylee. And she never really expresses much remorse about that. Yeah. She at never, any point. Yeah, they have a moment where it seems like a turning point who's really the bad guy, where Ted Raimi's character is like, you shot Kaylee, this is who she was, this is what she did, she was a good person. We don't get any sympathy for him from those characters. You don't get any remorse from Laura about that. They just continue like he's a bad guy. Take her head off, Travis. She's bit. Yeah, fill her with silver, son. Yeah, really, the bad guys of the game aren't really the werewolves, it's the family, and they get oddly written out no matter which direction you take it in. Depending on the choice you make with Ryan, which is really weird, it's whether you stab Bobby Hackett or not. It means Bobby Hackett will have a knife to defend himself against Chris in werewolf form, and which will end up saving his parents. His parents, if you save them during this scene, just weirdly leave and you never yeah. see them again. It's weird because they are the main antagonists. I mean, the werewolves try to kill you, but the bad guys are really the family. Yeah, they, they have... suck. They they are sort of trying to protect people from the curse, but once you interact with them more, the mother is terrible. She'll shoot Laura <laughs> just for making a noise that's annoying her. It's yeah, a, I mean... It's not, they're not the best people. She was annoying the shit out of me. There's a bit of gray area, I guess, with that they're trying to keep more people from being turned at the beginning, but yeah. they, they give up on it once Kaylee's shot. I just don't, I, I don't understand why you, you, you couldn't have just taken care of the problem when you had the chance. Taking care of the problem? Do you hear yourself? Yeah, they get angry because Kaylee was killed, so they're gonna take revenge on them, but they don't have that same reaction if you kill Chris, <laughs> <laughs> and they're alive at that point. Sometimes Sometimes they get killed depending on what choice that you make, but if they're alive, they just stumble out and it's like, what, wouldn't that be even worse? Because it's their son. It's not just their, you know, like, I mean, they care about their niece too, but it's their son. So it just seemed weird to kind of write them out of the story at that point. Like, why is it just Travis? Mm -hmm. again if he's alive at that point. It really feels with how the werewolves work that there should be a way to have a better ending where Ryan actually gets to interact with Chris Hackett again as you know human. Why else do you have this line take out to kind of set up you know if you shoot Silas then all the other people would be okay. It just seems weird to me that basically at that point it's either Chris or Ryan dies in that scene there's no way to do anything else. Yeah there's no way to like save that character Character. Yeah. <laughs> Unless everyone else dies. This feels very empty. Given the domino effect with how the werewolves work in this, it seems not all situations were actually thought through by the developers. At the end wrap up where you see who lived and died, it'll also tell you if they are still infected or not due to what wolf bit them. However, with Chris Hackett, it will always say he is still infected and incorrectly say others are still infected due to him living. Even if you have Chris live but kill Caleb Hackett, who Travis tells you is the one who bit Chris. Chris wasn't the first. That's not possible. Caleb. Kaylee. The girl you killed? Her brother. Therefore, in this ending, where I shot Caleb with Caitlin, but had Chris live, he should not be infected anymore. I did rather enjoy this particular ending scene I got, where werewolf Chris had got caught in a trap trying to eat Jacob, so you see David our cat hanging upside down in the wrap up. Also, oddly, there was a deleted scene where Ryan at least gets to confront Werewolf Chris a bit. I can't believe you hid this from us all summer. Ryan. I trusted you. You cared about us, all of us. It's still not enough to really feel like it closes out that story arc in a fully satisfying way, but it's at least more than you can get in the final game. I think we found Chris Hackett. There, Ryan just never really gets to say anything during this part, so it's really weird that this bit of story was left completely unobtainable. You don't get wrap up with certain characters if you basically get the better ending, which is where Laura, Ryan, and Travis are gonna go kill Silas. If you go down that path, you don't get Laura reuniting with Max. He lost, man? 
Max. Yeah. What are you wearing? Just something I threw together. <laughs> There's another weird point here is that he ends up wearing Laura's clothes because Emma took his as long as she survived earlier. Yeah, but they're in the same bag. They're so in the why same did she bag. Choose the, the lumpy, <laughs> ugly, dirty werewolf boy clothes yeah. and not the nice, cute <laughs> sweatsuit. A little strange, but if you are just alone with Max on the island, there's only really one thing to do, which is decide to swim back and die or stay on the island, and then that's it. There's nothing else to bother yeah, doing there. Why did they let you play that character? Because it utterly seemed pointless. Mm -hmm. uh, other than, I guess, maybe making a dumb decision that causes him to die, but the best thing is to just do nothing, so. Mm -hmm. Alright. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Lots of weird open plot threads there. No, a absolutely not. We, we have enough on our plates already. Stop discovering shit. You can make the decision to shoot Laura as the werewolf too with Ryan yeah, instead what? of Chris, which is just like, why would he do that? I don't know, but it is kind of funny. It's, it's like funny. There's, there's some funny- I do like that versions. as a choice, yeah. But yeah. It, it's a really dumb choice, but at yeah. least it's a choice. Hey! When you're making dumb choices and, and dumb things happen, it can be kind of funny. I enjoyed letting Jacob die, just mm -hmm. not doing anything and just letting him get his head torn off. That's the first time we played, we got annoyed with Jacob, so let's, let's get rid of this yeah. guy. Like, well, bye. Here are these stupid peanut butter pops. <laughs> oh, dude! Peanut butter butter pops! What are butter pops? Uh, no! What? Pop, pop, peanut butter butter pops! <laughs> pop, pop, pop them in your mouth! Pop! Oh, no, 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 sorry, I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Ah! Another choice the game gives you but doesn't really seem to consider is when Nick and Jacob decide to shoot for the peanut butter butter pops. You play as Nick during this and the game seems to think you'll shoot the melons, however you can also shoot the bottles. The issue being is whatever you do during this scene, Caitlin will then pick up the gun and shoot the bottles, even if they're already destroyed. Pop, pop, peanut butter, butter pops. Oh, they also have the story with Nick and Abigail. Again, they're setting up a love story there and he gets bit by a werewolf and he ends up getting turned. He starts acting kind of mean towards her. Yeah, and clearly there was something going on with those two, and then like he's being mean and then he runs off as a werewolf. The only time you're gonna see a good ending for him is if you end up killing the werewolf in the line that bit him, mm -hmm. and then you see him in the woods in the end, but you never see him again in the yeah, story. Yeah, you never see him and Abby interact ever again. Yeah. So that just feels so unfinished. Yeah, and they had the whole thing with Emma kissing him at the campfire, and then like her Abigail's feelings and they vaguely allude to that but again there's not a really a real conclusion to it mm -hmm. I mean I did I did like all of the setup like they had a, a really good it was really long to get to the werewolf portion but they were setting up character stuff which is why it was disappointing that they didn't have a, a real conclusion to it but I liked the interactions between the characters even the annoying ones and a lot of the cast is good yeah they had a great cast I liked all of the people that were playing the campers and uh, I liked Brenda song as Caitlin. She was really fun. Every dusk and dawn all through the summer. What doesn't kill you will make you stronger. stronger. We're here to lead the way. That meets for life, we're proud to say. say. Shout at Stratton, shout out loud. We're hacketeers. Two months and you never learn the words? I like Ted Raimi a lot, even though like he was a villain, like I just like Ted Raimi as an actor, so. Yeah, it's just like we kind of wanted to keep him alive regardless, like, you know, he's kind of a jerk, but we're making nicer choices with him, which, you know, makes him seem a little more gray area. Yeah. 
I didn't really expect Laura to be that much of a presence in the story either. I thought maybe it was just an opening kill type thing, but then she comes in as like a surprise hero of the thing, so. Which is a nice twist. I yeah. like how they pulled that off. Mm -hmm. And I do like them using the werewolf infection to their advantage because Ryan is fatally wounded at one point. He's going to bleed out and you have to make the choice with Laura to bite him or not. Yeah, otherwise he bleeds out and dies. Mm -hmm. If you let me bite you. What? If you let me bite you, it means you'll be infected, which means... Which means it will heal. I just think, I think one of us needs to stay human. But you'll die. You don't care about that. You just want someone to do your dirty work. Oh. Shut <clears throat> up. You should start to feel better soon, I guess. So that's interesting. It also like heals her eye because she got one of her eyes ripped out by Max yeah. earlier. She did not seem too bothered by that. No. Just the same it's with the Dylan. Same with Dylan. His hand cut off. And I don't know how physically he's doing the things he's doing afterwards. <laughs> like even if emotionally, maybe he's cut off from it. I don't know. Cut off. So I guess this is me now. What? You're gonna look great with a hook. We can call you Hooky McHook Face. Yeah, I guess it's pretty unique. I could get different attachments for it. <laughs> yeah, man. Lean into it. One hell of a story, too. He, he continues about his night, mm -hmm. doing a bunch of action stuff, and it's like, I don't know, maybe it's adrenaline <laughs> or something, but it just feels like you would pass out from blood loss. Or... He gets, like, a couple pain pills from the kid. Yeah. I'm like, that's going to take care of him the whole night. That's game fine. Logic, which is different, <laughs> because these are supposed to have some sort of realism to mm -hmm. werewolves aside. He just took, like, um, a green red herb combo. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's in fine. Evil, you just take that and you're, you recover. Yeah. I don't know. That seemed a little uh, unbelievable, but... Again, I think it's because his hand can get cut off or not, and a lot of it isn't really affecting the story, yeah. which is, again, a big flaw in how some of this is executed. Yeah. I mean, I think they had a lot of things to try and take into consideration with oh, these choices. Are. So, I mean, like, I get why it would be difficult but to do all of these different uh, branching sequences, I just, but... I do want to see, though, if you're going to give us all the stuff that's, you know, changing the dynamics between the group, supposedly, have it changed the dynamics between the group? I want to see certain characters be friendlier or more against yeah. each other based on what you say or do, because why are you making these choices if not? Yeah, well, I mean, especially if you're going to do all of this setup for the first half of the game, which is just character stuff, it just feels like you, you wasted some of your time a little bit if it didn't really, uh, your choices didn't really affect anything. A lot of the dialogue choices just affect the immediate response from a character instead of actually changing any kind of path. It can also be a bit obvious and awkward when the default dialogue kicks in after dialogue based on certain choices or actions. What the fuck happened up there, well, asshole? You should have moved out of the way. Where I... was I supposed to go? Whoa, okay. Sorry I saved your life. Jeez. <gasps> So, so much for our brilliant escape plan. Okay, back to the lodge. Dylan, thank you. You actually saved my life. For realsies. Yeah, you know, no sweat. I just can't wait to see who they choose. What? To play me in the movie about how brave I am. Don't push it. <laughs> okay. So, so much for our brilliant escape plan. Okay, back to the lodge. One especially awkward part when the default kicks in is whereas Dylan, you can choose to give Caitlin the extra gun he just grabbed. Uh, all right, you're right. Hey, we'll still have mine. If you're extra nice to me, I'll, I might let you hold it. Don't write a check that your ass can't cash. No, fuck that, I'm keeping it. Dude, if the hunter guys come back, she's basically a sitting duck in here. You're being really selfish right now. It's not a good look on you. No, I'm just being safe. I can't believe you're being such an asshole right now. Look, you don't tell me what to do, man, okay? 
I'm sorry, but it's it's not gonna happen. No matter what happens here, the next scene has Dylan handing over a gun to Ryan, which doesn't make a lot of sense if he gave his away. Chin up, big guy. It, I wouldn't really know what to do with it, okay? I trust you. Oh, thank you so much, Dylan. You're so generous and handsome. Yeah, no problem. Don't mention it. But I mean, yeah, I liked the characters for the most part. I didn't really care about Jacob, but <laughs> he was at least kind of funny. You know, yeah, like I, I peanut cared. peanut butter pass is a little funny. I saw a wheelbarrow out front, so we can load up all our booty in there. Uh, I'm sorry, what? It's like, um, it's like a barrel with wheels. You can put stuff in it and just wheel it around. Oh. See. Some of the interactions between characters is really funny and comes off like stupid things that friends might say to each other. Who should I call? Uh, Mr. H? The only number I got is to this phone. Okay, then 911. You mean 911? Who says 911? I don't know. We could have gotten more, but there was a hog or a boar, but Nick was very, very brave and took one for the team. Oh my gosh, it can't be. The hog of Hackett's quarry? What? I thought you hated that phrase. <laughs> big jokes take big sacrifices. Also, I liked that they had the sign for MASH at the camp. I don't think Hackett's quarry can be quite as far away from those places as Pan Mujong was, but it's a fun reference. There were a couple characters that ended up dying in our first playthrough. We didn't want to die, and we were disappointed when they died. Like, we wanted to see the end of their story, so... <laughs> and I then we were disappointed when we kept them alive because we wanted to see the end of their story. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, at the very least, they make you care enough about the characters that you have a motivation to keep them alive or to, to see what happens when they die. I really, really wish that the replayability was a lot easier because- Yeah, um, they need to improve this. This was a lot of issue with Until Dawn as well, that there's no kind of run or even kind of lightly jog button yeah. while you're moving around because some of these areas are pretty huge and there's not a lot going on in them either. Especially if you keep Emma alive, she has to track back through almost the entire campground and it's one of the largest exploration areas with any of the characters. But besides picking up the fireworks right in front of you, there's no point in exploring any of this area. So it's just a really long and slow walk through the dark that you have to do every playthrough where you keep Emma alive. The point of these kinds of games, you want to see all of the alternate routes. You're supposed to you want, want to, to replay it. Yeah, so it's a game that's meant to be played more than once, but they don't give you any option to skip through anything. You have yeah, to at least after you beat the game once, right? Yeah. You should be able to fast forward through scenes that are going to yeah. have no difference or skip right to them. Yeah. Like give you some kind of option like that. Yeah, at the, at the very least, they do give you, after you've beat it once, you can go to different chapters and you also have a death rewind that you have like three chances to alter something someone's fate. Why is it three chances? Of, like, it should just <laughs> be let you do it after you beat the damn game once. Yeah, I don't you want really to go understand. through different paths. Don't yeah. make you have to do it like three times or else. The only time I had an issue with it is this one spot where Caitlin can shoot Caleb or not. That's the most annoying part to yeah. get the aim right. Because yeah, sometimes really it feels like you're... Time. Yeah, you don't have a lot of time and the aim seems a little weird on that one. Whether you hit him or not. And then one time the game just crashed after we used yeah. it. Oh, it was so annoying. Then you have to sit through the scene again when it eventually reloads. Yeah. Also, even with the chapter select option, once you select a chapter, you have to complete the game on that file before you're allowed to chapter select on it again. Luckily, you can affect a lot of the game's outcomes just by replaying chapter 9 and 10, but still, there are other options in earlier chapters where it'd be fun to play around and change stuff if it didn't make you have to sit through cutscenes you've already been through every time. I like this style of game. It's nice just having an interactive movie, so I liked being able to make those kinds of choices. I never thought the walking and looking for things was fun, mostly because, again, it was way too dark to see anything, so it just felt like you were stumbling until maybe you found something. You'd have to be looking for rooms or stairs. We had the brightness all the way up. You couldn't see them. You would just have to keep wandering until you got mm -hmm. there, and that's not very fun gameplay. The part Sometimes where you're the quick in the... time events are all right, but like, 
when you're actually looking for clues, you just have to hope you see one of those little X's light up. But exploring's never fun. The part where you're wandering around through the main lodge as Caitlin towards the end is almost impossible to see anything. Yeah. And we went through that a couple of times and I missed that you could go through all these different <laughs> rooms, the kitchen was open, there's stairs going up to these other areas. I couldn't see them. I thought it was a wall because it was almost pitch black. Yeah. I've heard that it was better on PC or something, that there was like right. less issues with that. But that was really something that they needed to fix and I think they did have some patch for it, but I don't know if it helped very much. I'm not sure. We downloaded a really large, like 20 gig update for this yeah. game and it did not fix it. And it was still kind of buggy at parts. Yeah, but... you have the crash, random crashing, the stuttering, there's weird transitions between certain scenes. That wasn't a werewolf, it was Kaylee Hackett, Chris's daughter. Whatever I- Kaylee Hackett, Chris's daughter. Whatever I shot, that was no girl. Just try to rest. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just try to rest. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, uh, why didn't you come? So, uh, why didn't you come? Maybe there's a slight chance it was a werewolf. Are you out of your... Goddamn mine? <sighs> Werewolves? Seriously? What the fuck? Werewolves? Seriously? What the fuck? There's also this weird bit where Dylan and Ryan are charging their phones. Nice. Full up. Who the hell says 28 and 32% charged is full op? At first I thought maybe Dylan was just being an idiot and when looking at upside down not close enough thought it said 82% and that the phone still almost being dead was going to come into play, but it doesn't. It just seems like they forgot to put a more charged screen on the phones. Every Lines. time that we got the wrap up at the end with the uh, who lived with the guy, <laughs> yeah. every time after the first one we'd have to wait forever on a blank screen. Yeah, they'll go to, to the, the VHS Lodi screen yeah. even. That happened every single time. I don't think there was a single time where it went through smoothly. <laughs> and then like the song would end, but they would still be going because they <laughs> fucked up the timing on it. So it would right. just be silent at the very end. The copyright song. Yeah. <laughs> the quarry includes alternate music tracks for certain parts, which is supposed to make the game clear to stream and whatnot. But apparently even on the alternate score, claims might come up about the music, so that wasn't quite perfectly implemented either. Are you coming away from this uh, more positive or negative about the game? I really like it for the most part, I guess. I'm just, I'm left wanting more is the big issue. And that, that's kind of the same way I felt about it until dawn. I want a bit more from it. I wanted to also the werewolves to look a little bit more like wolves. They just seemed like the Wendigos in Until Dawn. Like not very werewolves Giant <laughs> kind of lanky creatures. Yeah. And very similar. Yeah, I guess this is supposed to be a spiritual sequel of sorts, <laughs> but it is a different monster. So it would have been nice if it looked a little different. Mm -hmm. Similar sort of thing too, because people would turn into Wendigos in the other one. There's a lot of neat ideas they did with the werewolf concept in this. I love the whole branching path thing, like take out the werewolf that <laughs> sired these people and then they'll all be okay. But it doesn't utilize it as well as it should, I feel. There should be a lot of ways to save certain people and keep a lot of them alive if you did everything perfectly. Even if you had to beat it once before you could do that, that would still be fun. Maybe after you beat it once, you can make a choice with Laura to not kill Kaylee, so that creates a large branch. They could have like worked that out at least to have one major branch point in the story like that. I think I liked it better as a movie than a game, but it also at the same time feels like an incomplete movie. But there's lots of interesting stuff there. I think they had a great soundtrack. I liked the music that they chose for it, and I thought the Which graphics. Which we will were... not be playing. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Just imagine <laughs> the songs that are in it. Maybe you have to play it for yourself. I thought the graphics were really genuinely impressive. Like, uh, I'm 
and just really in awe of, like how far we were just come. playing on the ps4 version the pc and ps5 are better graphics oh are they so how do we end this video i guess we gotta go to hackett's quarry <laughs> <laughs> and we'll kill everyone and then get arrested <laughs> yeah <laughs> pretty good yeah or we'll make a choice which will still end up with us getting arrested <laughs> Oh, sleepy Jean, what could it mean? <laughs> something, something, daydream <laughs> Allison and Phelan made it out of the review. The sun is bright and the air is free, so let's go. Let's go film a leaf. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>